Stability AI, the company behind Stable Diffusion just released their second large language model. Now, this one is called Stable Wakunya, and they claim it to be the world's best open source RLHF LLM. If you recall, a few days ago, they released Stable LM. It was their first large language model. So how is this new Stable Wakunya different from Stable LM? So this model was trained with reinforced learning from human feedback, which is a very similar approach to what OpenAI is using for their models, including ChatGPT and GPT-4. The base model itself is Wakunya V0, uh, 13 billion parameter model. It was further instruction fine-tuned on a large data set, and then it was trained using this RLHF. Wakunya itself is a fine-tuned version of the Llama 13B model. Now, that makes it very tricky for commercial use because Llama's original weights are not open source. Theoretically, you still need to request Meta or Facebook uh, to get access to those weights. Now, the main question is, does using RLHF even help the model or not? So, in this work, Stability AI actually provided a comparison of this model with similarly sized models on different uh, benchmark datasets. We will be conducting our own tests in this video, and I'm also going to show you how can you potentially use this on your local machine if you have a powerful enough GPU. But based on these results, in some of the tests or benchmarks, it actually performs very good. So for example, this bool Q, uh, it actually outperforms all the rest of the models. Similarly, on this data set, MNLI, it is able to outperform the rest of the models. However, it's not really consistent. For example, if you look at this um, truthful QA, then it lags behind. And same is the case in some other cases. So let's say in this case, there's uh, arc challenge. So it lags behind. But overall, it's up in the first or second position. It's not too far off. Now, in most of the cases, the appropriate comparison is going to be with Wakunya 13B parameter model rather than the rest of the models. So in all the cases, if you compare the stable Wakunya with Wakunya 13B, at least on these benchmarks, it outperforms Wakunya except in this truthful uh, QA benchmark. So this is very significant because um, as far as I know, Wakunya is probably the best open source model which could be compared with ChatGPT in some cases. Now, how did they achieve this? So they actually did two steps to uh, fine tuning. In the first case, they used a newer data set. So this is a combination of three different data sets to fine tune the Wakunya 13B model. So the data set that we used is Open Assistant Conversation data set, which is a human generated, human annotated assistant style conversation. Next data set is uh, GPT for all prompt generation. This data set is prompts and responses generated by uh, ChatGPT. And the last one is uh, the Alpaca data set, which is again, instruction and demonstration generated by OpenAI's DaVinci model. Now, a couple of things to consider here with the fine tuning. Uh, two out of the three data set are relying on uh, ChatGPT. So the answers or responses from this model could be skewed towards uh, responses that you would expect from ChatGPT. The second stage is where they do the reinforcement learning with human feedback. Again, they're using three data sets. So one is the open assistant conversation data set containing uh, around 7,000 preferences samples. Then there's an entropic uh, reinforcement learning data set. And then there is uh, the one from Stanford human preferences data set. As if the great thing about these data sets is all of them are open source and you can actually look at how they look like. So for example, we are looking at this entropic data set. So in this case, human was given two responses from the assistant for the same prompt. And then the human chose which response is good. So in this case, for example, you see that the prompt is the same, uh, but the assistant gave two responses. And then uh, on the left hand side, you uh, can see the one that was chosen by human. On the right hand side, that's the one that was rejected. So this is how they trained it using this reinforcement learning technique. Now, apart from this model, they also announced another feature, which we're going to talk about in a second. But let's talk about how you can actually get access to this model. 
as I said, it's an open source model based on Wakunya 13 billion parameter, which is uh, based on the Lama weights. Uh, they have made the delta weights available, uh, and you can even play with this locally uh, if you have a powerful enough machine. We're going to be looking at um, uh, hugging face spaces where we will be experimenting with the model. But at the end of the video, I will show you how you can potentially run this locally or in a Google Colab if you have powerful enough machine. So if you recall a few days ago, I showed you this hugging chat interface from hugging face. Now Stability AI is also announcing the upcoming chatbot interface. This is great uh, because this shows that we're going to have multiple options. So it's really awesome if you don't want to be sending your data to OpenAI. Now let's experiment with the model itself. To access the model, you can go to Hugging Face and then click on Spaces. And then you want to search for Stable Lacuna. I am going to put uh, the link to the model itself. So here we have uh, the link from Carper AI. So let's click on this. This is their chat interface. So let's first test whether it's any good for ideas generation. So the prompt is create a list of three startup ideas in the enterprise B2B SaaS. The startup ideas should have a strong and compelling mission and also use AI in some way. And we want it to avoid cryptocurrencies and blockchain. So okay, it came up with three ideas. Uh, one thing is that at least the names are original. Uh, I asked the same a uh, question from other uh, open source and even chat GPT and most of the time it comes up with product names which uh, already exist but in least in this case uh, all the three the names that it came up with are actually original so that's pretty nice and the second uh, part which I really liked is especially this insightful dairy this I haven't seen before at all in any of my other uh, interactions with these large language models so it says a B2B SaaS platform that uses AI to predict the optimum time for dairy farmers to schedule their milking. Uh, the platform can then automatically schedule and optimize milking to maximize efficiency and minimize waste. Uh, the mission is to help dairy farmers increase production, uh, productivity and profitability while reducing environmental impact. This is pretty cool. Uh, I ha as I said, I haven't seen this before at all. The next two is what you would expect. Uh, probably well, you guys all have already seen it. So the second one is generate custom tailored financial forecast for small to medium sized businesses. I, I think this is already being done. Uh, and the, uh, the last one, mindful manufacturing. It's a AI platform that, to automate and optimize manufacturing processes. So that's um, also something which is already available. But I really like this insightful dairy uh, idea. So I'll, I'll give it a A plus. Next, I went and uh, found this article, three ways AI can help you build your course outline, hint for you guys, uh, and copied this all text and asked uh, Stable Wukunya to actually summarize it. And I said things step by step. So here is the summary. And it's actually, it did a pretty good job. It uh, uh, was able to uh, get the three main uh, points that uh, the author is trying to uh, convey. So author is basically talking about how you can leverage AI in course creation and it came up with a pretty nice summary. One of the examples that they have shown in their blog post is that it's able to do basic math. So for example they are asking it to add uh, 25 plus 64 the answer is 89. So I thought I'm going to replicate this but it didn't go as planned so in this case i asked it, can you do math it said yes i can help you with math right so i said what is 26 plus 9 the answer is 93. Uh, that doesn't seem to be right right so i asked it can you explain step by step so it says you add two numbers the answer should be 93. Uh, then i checked it what is one plus one it's giving me the correct answer then uh, I asked it again, what is the sum of 16 plus 9? So this time it got it right. So it really depends because I asked the same question again and this time it gets the correct answer. Uh, so another test was the square root of 81. It is able to figure out it's 9. But uh, based on my test, I think you can't really rely on it for mathematics. Uh, it's all over the place. Um, the, the answers are not consistent. It will just make up numbers sometimes. So um, probably best to avoid it for mathematics. Now, just to be fair uh, to a stable Wakunya, 
uh, all natural language models have trouble um, solving mathematics. Okay, here's another unused case. So I asked it to write a job description of an experienced machine learning engineer, include all the necessary skills. Uh, I think it came up with a pretty good list, uh, but I have seen that some other uh, large language models can produce a more detailed description uh, than this. But uh, it, it's still a good starting point. You know, before uh, looking at its ability of generating some mildly controversial uh, responses, let's look at its ability to program. Now, I use a couple of simple tests uh, to check its ability to program. So the first one is write a Python function to write a file into an S3 bucket using the Boto library. And if you search online, you should be able to find this. Uh, there are multiple implementations. So most of the models are actually able to implement it flawlessly. That's the case with stable Waconia as well. Now, the more interesting one is this, uh, where I have seen some of the large language models have trouble implementing it. So I'm asking it write an HTML code for a website that has a single button. When the button is pressed, it randomly shows one joke from a list of 10 jokes and display that to the user. A button press also changes the color of the background, right? So I do see uh, there are not 10 jokes, but I would say five jokes and then it says so on. So you can actually add to this list of jokes. That's fine. But let's look at if it actually works. Uh, most of the large language models that I have used, they actually have trouble implementing this. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste the code here. If you don't know, this is the HTML editor from uh, W3Schools. So you can actually run this online. Let me just run this. Okay, so it does show a button, get random joke, and then it says loading, right? Let's click the button and see what happens. Oh, wow, it worked. That's pretty neat. Although, for some reason, it's not changing the color. Oh, okay, I think it got that part wrong because it simply set the color to blue, so it's not really modifying the color at all. But I think it's still a pretty neat. It got the first part right. Now, since it's a chat interface, you can actually go and tell the model uh, if there's something wrong. So I said the color is not changing when I click the button. It always, uh, it's always blue. With each button click, the color should also change to a random color, right? And then it went ahead and said that uh, you can modify the get random joke function, right? So it re-implemented that. So let's see uh, if it actually works. I think right now it's selecting out of those five different colors, but that's fine. Okay, now I need to actually replace this function. So I'm going to copy this, right, paste it here. I don't want to, I don't care about the uh, formatting right now, but let's run this. Okay, so, oh wow, okay, nice. So it actually works. This is pretty cool. Uh, so now you, since we have the ability to actually chat with the model, so you can uh, tell it the edits just like ChatGPT, and it's able to um, update it. This is pretty awesome. Okay, so the next two ones are simply asking it to pretend either to, it to be a Democrat or Republican and explain why their respective policies are best for the country. Uh, it does give me a response, so that's pretty nice to see. Uh, if you ask ChatGPT or like a variation of this question, it probably is going to say as a large language model, I cannot do this. So it's it's good to see that uh, it's able to do it. Like we have a response for the same question when we ask it to pretend it to be a Republican as well. For some reason, uh, it added the stable Lukunia in the start. Probably that's a token it's using. Now let's see how you can actually use this locally or in your own applications if you have a powerful enough uh, GPU. Unfortunately, I don't really have access to a really uh, powerful computer, so I cannot run these on my local machine, but there is a simple way around it. So um, you all you need is to install the uh, transformer library, right? And the rest of the process is very simple to what you would expect uh, from a transformer-based model. So you need to have a tokenizer since it's based on Llama, so you can use the Llama tokenizer. And then you need to have uh, auto ML for causal LM. So you need the model itself. They provide it here, uh, but this is the Delta model. But there are good people of the internet. So for example, uh, this person, the block, 
he has uh, provided uh, the, an uncompromised uh, model in the hugging face format. So you can actually uh, simply copy this and replace it with uh, replace this path to the uh, uncompromised model, right? So you can simply put that path here and this will download the corresponding model and you can use it. Now, you just want to be careful about the prompt. So the prompt has to be provided in a very specific format. So the prompt starts with uh, three hash signs or pound signs with the space and then human. And after this, you need to uh, provide your prompt and then you need to append it by uh, three uh, pound signs and then an assistant. And after this uh, backslash, this is when it's going to start giving you the response. So it's a very particular um, format that you need to make sure you are following. Then the rest is very simple to uh, what you would expect when you were working with uh, a model from Hugging Face. Now, as I said, unfortunately, I don't have access to a powerful machine, so I can't run this locally, but uh, the process should be very simple to follow. Now, final thoughts on the model. Uh, it is a very powerful model indeed. There are definitely some issues in some cases. Um, it doesn't perform as good, but uh, you would expect the performance to be on par with the original Wokunia uh, 13 billion parameter model. Uh, the great thing is it's the first step in uh, training open source models with uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback. So in future, or in really near future, we can expect to have powerful uh, open source model that could potentially compete with ChatGPT on very specific tasks. And I want to highlight this. The power of these models is not the disability to generalize, but they are going to be trained for very specific uh, tasks. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below. Hope you liked the video. So consider subscribing to the channel if you already haven't. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.